Hello and welcome to News Now on TV360. I am Thelma Okoro. Members of the Nigerian Senate have rejected calls for the Nigerian government to sell off some of the country's assets in order to grow the economy away from recession. The decision was taken by a voice vote, a voice vote after the motion was moved by the Senate Minority Leader. Ali Undume. Nigeria is currently in a recession after official data from the country's Bureau of Statistics showed that its gross domestic product had contract contracted by 2.06 percent. The federal government is considering the sale of national assets to generate funds to finance key infrastructure projects and to generate enough liquidity to pull the economy away from recession. The Nigerian Labour Congress has rejected recent calls for the country's assets to be sold as a way to stem the current economic recession. Speaking at a news conference in Nigeria, NLC President Aibawaba said the union remains firm on its resolve to fight off calls to sell national assets. Waba expressed worry over the impending consequences of such actions. Sell of our common wealth and strategic assets is not a move certainly in the right direction. And all Nigerians must have the courage to point this out. The decision can be likened to a farmer who is proposing to sell his farmland because of drought to feed his family. That is the logic and analogy of what we are proposing or our government is proposing as a country. Clearly, the major problem in Nigeria today is that it's only the poor and the working class that are paying the correct tax. People evade tax, and I think clearly, the Panama Paper Link have clearly shown us what has been happening. In fact, Nigeria is a tax people. And I think that has been collaborated further by the Tabo Mbeki report, AU report, on illicit financial flow out of Africa. That report said conservatively about $50 billion is taken out of Africa annually through tax dodging, tax evasion, and deliberately people given waiver. And we know who are those benefiting from waiver that have put us into such a situation. So it must be situated within our argument that we have a lot of options that can be addressed and that can be situated within this argument. And I try to put one across to all of us, that if the high and the mighty and everybody is able to pay tax, we are certain, because Lagos have shown a good example, that where people pay correct tax, it is possible for us to have enough to drive our economy. And therefore, it is one option that I think government should consider. We are therefore reinstating our position that we are opposed to the sale of those strategic assets in whatever guise in order to try to address the challenges in the economy. The Nigerian Labour Congress has also inaugurated a 10-man NLC as to think tank committee on the current socio-economic challenges in Nigeria. Ayuba Wabawa addressing the committee tasked them to come up with an alternative to the harsh economic realities in the country. He suggested that the alternative must be for the people and not an alternative that will compound the lot of the citizens. The situation we have passed through in the past. Uh, I remember the fight against SAP, structural adjustment program, uh, which was similar to what, is, to what we are passing through today. Uh, a lot of options we are brought to the table, and I think we raised to the challenge by bringing forth alternative that is pro-people. It is therefore my honor and privilege to announce that the following members, uh, 10 of them, will actually represent the interests of the working class by coming up with alternative development agenda. So let me go through the list. I have on the list Dr. Dipo Fashino, Professor Toye Olorinde, Dr. Mohammed Amin Aliu, Dr. Muntaka Usman, Dr. Isaac Ngogogu, 
Dr. Yemisi Bangboche, Comrade Isa Arenu MNI, Mr. Sonny Atuma, Dr. Peter Ozoison, and the secretary is Comrade Hawa Mustafa. So, Comrades, it is my honor and privilege uh, to therefore, on behalf of the working class, inaugurate this very important committee. I'm sure that the assignment is enormous, but looking at their caliber and also their pedigree and the philosophy they stand for, I'm sure that they will make all of us proud. So once again, I congratulate all of them. It is therefore my honor once again to uh, pronounce that they stand inaugurated and the assignment takes effect immediately. I want to thank the President of Congress for giving us this opportunity to um, address the crisis uh, of our society, economic and social. Uh, we want to promise the Nigerian working people that we will do our best to deliver on this task. And we want to encourage Nigerian people themselves to begin to understand that there are alternatives. President Muhammad Buhari has approved the appointment of chief executives for 13 federal power statals and agencies. A statement by Bolaji Adebi, the director of press in the office of the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, in a statement released confirmed the appointments on Monday. He listed the appointments as follows. Joseph Ari as the Director General of the Industrial Training Fund, Isa Ibrahim as the Director General of the National Information Technology Development Agency, Simbi Wabote as the Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Content Monitoring Board, Aboloma Anthony as the Director General of the Standards Organization of Nigeria, Maman Amadu as the Director General of the Bureau of Public Procurement, Sharon Ikeazo as the Pension Transitional Agreement Directorate, Akodundu Gloria as the National Coordinator, New Partnership for Africa's Development, Ahmed Boboy as the Executive Secretary of the Petroleum Equalization Fund, Umana Umana as the Managing Director of the Oil and Gas Free Zone Authority, Sadia Farouk as the Federal Commissioner of the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons, Usman Abubakar as the Chairman of the Nigerian Railway Corporation, Belo Guzo as the Executive Secretary of the Petroleum Technology Development Fund, Yewande Sadiku as the Executive Secretary of the National Investment Promotion Commission. National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, John Oyegu, says he would not be drawn into a war of words with one of the national leaders of the party, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. This comes less than 48 hours after Tinubu demanded the resignation of the party chairman. Tinubu accused Oyegu of sabotaging the will of democracy in Undo State by overriding the decision of the appeal panel that asked for a fresh governorship primary election following allegations that showed that the delegates had the delegates list used had been tampered with. Oyegun who spoke in Benin City, the other state's capital, said he would only speak after the elections in other states have been concluded. Meanwhile, leaders in the party have pledged their support for John Oyegun. In a statement in Abuja, the chairman of the APC United Front, Ibrahim Musa, this, this described as laughable the calls on Oyegun to resign as chairman of the party. According to the leaders, the world has seen a more progressive party under Oyegun's dynamic leadership. The leaders also praised Oyegun for giving equal rights and opportunities to members of the APC, regardless of their status, class, and affiliation. The African Development Bank is set to lend Niger a total of 
$4.1 billion over 2016 and 2017 and $10 billion by 2019, its president has said. The plan includes $1 billion of budget support, $300 million to create jobs for 185,000 youths, $250 million towards Northeast infrastructure development, and $1 million grant to deal with challenges of internally displaced persons in the Northeast. The bank's president, Akiomi Adeshino, said he would go to the Pan-African Lenders Board next month to seek approval for the first $1 billion loan to cover budget deficit. Nigeria is currently in a recession after official data from the country's Bureau of Statistics showed that its gross domestic product had contracted by 2.06% in the second quarter. This has left the country struggling to fund a record 6.06 trillion Naira 2016 budget that aims to stimulate growth by tripling capital expenditure. Nigeria's Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashala, says the country has begun implementing infrastructure roadmaps as it seeks to move its economy away from recession. He was speaking at the Wilson Center in Washington, D.C., U.S., while presenting a paper on leadership and politics of reform in Africa. Fashala said the immediate and long-term solution to the problem of economic recession lay in massive investment in infrastructure which, according to him, has already commenced. In the housing sector, Fashala said the roadmap comprised of the designing of houses that would respond to the diverse cultures and climatic conditions of the citizens living in the six geopolitical zones. While in the power sector, Fashala revealed that the government had commenced plans to improve power supply across the country. The Inspector General of Nigeria's police force, Ibrahim Idris, has urged officials of the force to be apolitical during the governorship election in Edo State. In a statement by the spokesman for the police force, Don Awuna, the IGP warned officers and men to conduct themselves in a manner worthy of the Nigerian police force. He stated that the rescheduled elections had not only afforded the police the opportunity to prepare, but has also provided an avenue to ensure a free, fair and credible and and also secured electoral process. The rescheduled election is slated to hold on Wednesday, 28th September 2016. The Nigerian Navy says its operatives have arrested illegal oil bunkers at Ekbomo Creek in Wari, Niger Delta. In a statement by its director of information, Christian Ezekobi, the Navy said the suspected oil bunkers were caught with a Cotonou boat carrying unspecified amount of product suspected to be crude oil. The Navy also said it had destroyed an illegal refinery in the same area. Though no arrest was made, the patrol team in conjunction with troops of the land components of Operation Delta Safe also destroyed the site. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, has proposed a review of the Appropriation Act to set a time frame for the nation's budgetary process. The Speaker made the call at a gathering where other lawmakers suggested the inputs of the public before passing the nation's budget. The Nigerian 2016 budget is one issue that has continued to generate public debates in the country. According to the Speaker, there is an urgent need to reform the budgetary process. Such reforms, according to him, will not only reduce the delay for the passage of the national budget, but it will also enable lawmakers work on the budget thoroughly before it is passed. Former Chairman of the House Committee on Appropriation, Abdulmumun Jibrin, has failed to appear before the House Ethics and Privileges Committee investigating claims of misconduct against him. The Ethics Panel investigating Jibrin for breaching the privileges of the House started sitting on Friday last week. Chairman of the committee, Nicholas Osai, has urged Jibrin to appear on Monday at 12 p.m., but he failed to show up to the proceedings. The investigations by the House Committee on Ethics and Privileges followed a re resolution by the House to probe the allegations of pardon of the 2016 budget by some of its members. The House has been rocked by budget fraud scandal triggered by Jibrin, who accused the Speaker of the House, Yakubu Dogara, and three others of pardoning the budget with billions of naira of fictitious projects. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll look at business and sports stories. Don't go away. Hello? Yeah, I 
found your wallet in front of a supermarket. Meet me at Apple Junction. Yes, I'll be waiting for you. Now you find out. <laughs> Two of us. <laughs> Thank you very much, officer. You know, it's surprising that men like you still exist in the police force. Yes, so. Oh, yes. This is just a token <laughs> of my appreciation. Oh, no. You don't need to do this. We are only doing our job. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. God You're bless welcome. you. You're welcome. Now I know police is really my friend. Yes. Friend. You know your problem. You are greedy. I'm a policeman who is doing his job. All forms of corruption in the force. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. The Nigerian Nara fell against the U.S. dollar in all the major segments of the market. At the interbank segment of the market, the Nara closed at 308. Trading at the Bureau of Change showed that the Nara lost five points to exchange at 445 against the United States dollars, while it traded for 565 and 480 against the pound sterling and the euro, respectively. The Nara also closed at 445, 559, and 484 to the dollar pound sterling and the euro at the parallel market. Traders at the market blame acute forex shortage of the greenback to the poor performance of the Naira at the market. The Manufacturer Association of Nigeria, MAN, has urged the federal government not to sign the European Union Economic Partnership Agreement, EPA. According to MAN, signing the agreement will kill local industries in the country. Addressing journalists at MAN House in Lagos, State. President of the body, Frank Jacobs, also called on the government to sell some of its assets to support the Nigerian economy. We are not at the same level development wise with Europe. So opening our borders for their, for their products to come in, the reciprocity for ours to go to them will not benefit our country. It will only benefit them. They are using us as a market extension and we don't want to have them. As part of the delivery of the event, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria provides insight on manufacturers' expectations for the year 2017 and suggests policy direction out of the current recession that the nation's economy is experiencing. The theme for the annual lecture is diversifying the Nigerian economy, the role of government. Nigerian government should cut down its equity in some of the companies, especially those companies that are currently run exclusively by government, where government has majority share. It is our view that government should divest from those companies sell up some of those ash, some of those uh, shares, but not all of it. We're not saying sell up all the shares. We say reduce your shareholding in these companies and raise capital. And normally, if we look at LNG today, it is the most profitable company that the federal government has a share in. And it is profitable because the company is run by the private sector. It's private sector driven. 51% of the shares are owned by the private sector. So since the private sector has controlling share, they run the company like the private sector business and it's very, very efficient. We're saying the same thing with other joint venture companies that the federal government has interest in, where they have higher interest than where they have majority share, they should give, get rid of some of those shares to raise this money so that the companies will run more efficiently because we all know that government has no business in business. 
The Nigerian Senate on Tuesday resolved to investigate allegations of $13.92 billion illicit financial flow involving telecommunications company MTN Nigeria as well as four banks and the Minister of Trade and Investment, Okechiku Enelama. The resolution followed a motion by Dino Malai, a senator representing Kogi West, an APC senator who said MTN connived with some influential and unpatriotic Nigerians to illegally repatriate the money of Nigeria between 2006 and 2016 in violation of the Foreign Exchange Act. Malaya named Enelama as one of the influential Nigerians who worked with MTN to transfer the huge amount of money out of the country. He said the figures were floated and incorporated in offshore accounts. Crude futures fell further on Tuesday as optimism faded for an output-limiting deal during an oil producer meeting in Algeria. Brent crude futures slipped 80 cents to $46.55 per barrel, while U.S. crude fell 68 cents to $45. $0.25 per barrel. Saudi Arabia on Tuesday dashed hopes that OPEC oil producers could clinch a, <coughs> I beg your pardon, could clinch a deal in Algeria this week, as sources within the exporter group said the differences between the kingdom and rival Iran remained too wide. The death toll from militia clashes with security forces in the Democratic Republic of Congo last week was at least 49, more than three times the number reported earlier. Initial estimates had put the death toll at 13. Fighters from militia group Kamwina Nsapo, seeking to avenge the death of their leader of the same name, battled security forces on, Tuesday, on Thursday and Friday in the town of Kananga, in the center of the vast Central African country. UN-funded Radio Okapi quoted Alex Kande, governor of the Kasai Central Province, as saying that 27 of the dead were militia men, 16 were members of the security forces, and 6 were civilians. Hillary Clinton forced Donald Trump onto defense over his temperament, refusal to release his taxes and his past comments about race and women during a fiery debut presidential debate on Monday. Clinton, who has seen her dominance of the presidential election fade in the weeks since the Democratic Convention, delivered a strong performance in which she demonstrated a command of policy and a sense of humor, smiling through some of Trump's strongest attacks. Trump came out swinging at the beginning of the debate and made some effective points on the economy and jobs, some of the aspects of his outsider presidential campaign that have struck a chord with many Americans. But the debate highlighted Trump's tendency to make false claims as he made inaccurate statements on everything from laws regarding policing and his support for the Iraq war. Moving on to sports stories now, former Dream Team 6 coach Samson Siasia has issued a two-week ultimatum to the Nigerian Football Federation to pay him his outstanding salaries. The former coach resigned from his post last month citing unpaid wages as a key reason for his resignation. The NFF have admitted owing him but say problems with the country's treasury singular account is the reason behind its failure to pay him his salary. During a meeting with Samson Siasia and Sports Minister Solomon Dalong last month, NFF assured that the coach would soon receive his outstanding payments. However, the body has yet to pay the outstanding allowances. Now, the 49-year-old has threatened to stage a protest at the NFF Secretariat if he is not paid his outstanding allowances within the next two weeks. The English Football Association has begun investigations into allegations that current manager Sam Allardyce allegedly used his role to influence player transfers. The former Sunderland manager was caught on camera giving advice to reporters posing as far as businessmen on how to get round uh, gets round rules about third-party ownership of players. It is alleged that he negotiated a £400,000 deal to offer advice for the unknown company. The FA has now asked to see the full evidence from the newspaper Sting. The Sting was conducted by the Daily Telegraph. Allardyce, however, is yet to respond to the allegations, but his position as England's manager is now under severe threat after just one game in charge of the team. He was appointed England coach on July 2016 to replace Roy Hodgson, who resigned after, after a disappointing Euro 2016 campaign. 
Former FIFA Vice President Prince Ali bin Hussein of Jordan has attacked the decision to disband the FIFA Anti-Racism Tax Force as ridiculous and shameful. In a statement posted on Twitter, Prince Ali described FIFA's stance that the tax force had completed its mission as incredibly worrying. FIFA's decision was communicated in a letter to the tax force member this weekend and then reiterated by the new General Secretary, Fatma Samura, at the Soccer Rex Conference in Manchester on Monday. The tax force was set up by the former FIFA president, Sir Blatter, to check with racism, racism in football. It was headed by FIFA's former vice, Jeffrey Webb, until his arrest in 2015 as part of the American investigation into corruption in football. Well, that's all we have on news now. Thank you very much for joining us. I am Thelma Okoro.